It's now director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Rochelle Walensky. Dr. Walensky, we appreciate you being on this morning. Thanks so much. Wanted to have you on and get some clarity about these, this new guidance of taking down for asymptomatic people who've tested positive for COVID from 10 days to five days of isolation and then wear the mask for five, those second five days. We've talked over the last couple of days to a bunch of doctors who were generally sympathetic to you and the work you're doing and the task you have before you who are a little bit confused. So explain for our viewers who also may be confused how you arrived at those five days. Right, great to be with you. Um, so, you know, what we have right now is science that looks at the decay of the virus, how much transmission is happening during that period after you've been infected. And what we know is the most transmission happens in those first one to two days before you have symptoms, and then two to three days after you have symptoms. And that's really about 85 to 90% of all the transmission that could occur. And that's really when we wanna have you stay home during those first five days. During those last five days, we of course wanna make sure that you're wearing a mask because there still is a little bit of residual transmission. But we also know that right now we're seeing a huge number of cases and we may even see more. And so we wanna recognize that many of those cases may be asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, and especially if you're um, vaccinated or boosted. And so we want to make sure that it's practical guidance that people can follow, um, especially in the context of the fact that we know that people may not practically be able to isolate for a full 10 days. So it was all of those factors in that science coming together that led us to these new updated recommendations. So do you believe, Dr. Walensky, that after those five days, though, even with the mask, that person should test negative before she or he heads back out into the world before they go to a New Year's party, before, let's say, they go back to school on Monday? Should they show a negative test as well as wearing the mask? Yeah, really important question, and this has been raised. So we have uh, recommendations for isolation, and in those recommendations, we do not recommend a test for several reasons. First, we know the PCR test can stay positive for 12 weeks, so months. Your PCR test can be positive. If you were waiting for a negative PCR, you'd be isolating for months. Um, in terms of the antigen, though, we actually don't know how those tests perform, whether they can actually predict whether you can transmit virus or not. So if we used an antigen test at that day five period, if you were negative, we would say still wear your mask. And if you were positive, we would say still wear your mask. So given that the antigen test in that moment was not going to change our recommendations, we did not recommend an antigen test there. We do recommend an antigen test after you've been exposed during your period of quarantine. Okay, so just to, I'm just going to give real world scenarios then. If you are going back to school on Monday, which millions of kids are, uh, we certainly hope anyway, um, if they've tested positive a week before, they put a mask on after five days, they should go back to school without showing a negative test? If they are feeling well enough, they can go back to school without showing a negative test. They need to make sure they're masked. Okay, and so that goes for anybody, an adult, a child, go back to work, go back after those five days? Absolutely, yes. But, but again, this only works as well as people are willing to be adherent to these recommendations. And so we're really saying, if you're only going to isolate for a certain period of time, we want to make sure you're doing so when you're maximally infectious, those first five days. And then please protect your others by wearing a mask for those last five days. Director Walensky, good morning. It's Jonathan Lemire. I want to push a little further on, on this. Uh, you, what, the UK just moved its isolation period from 10 days to seven. What's the reasoning behind it going all the way to five? And how do you address the concerns of someone who knows that their coworker, let's say, had tested positive just five days before, no longer does not have to show a negative test to go back to work, might be wearing a mask, but Surely that person is understandable why I'd be anxious sitting next to someone who so recently uh, was positive. Yeah, so um, two questions there. One is the UK guidance. Um, the UK is using antigen tests in a different way. They are testing very frequently with their antigen tests. And so they are actually picking up infection probably earlier than we are. So if we match them, um, they're probably picking up infection about a day or two earlier. So if we're trying to capture all of that transmissible time, we're really at about the same timeline as the UK. I want to be very clear and say, if you have the capacity to stay home for longer, if you still have symptoms, 
symptoms. We are not saying you have to go out after five days of isolation. We're just saying that the maximum amount of your transmissible time has already occurred. Um, and we are saying that you should be wearing your mask after those first five days. If you are wearing your mask, if your coworker is wearing your mask, then that should prevent the residual amount of transmission that has, is possible. And one more on this. Why isn't there a difference uh, in the isolation period between someone who is vaccinated versus unvaccinated? We know it seems to be that unvaccinated people would carry a lot more of the virus on them, potentially being contagious longer. Yeah, really important question. So all of this was based on the scenario of the unvaccinated person, the viral decay scientific data that we've seen in unvaccinated people. We have seen that vaccinated people who get disease have the same amount of viral burden early on, a lot of that viral burden in those first five days. Um, they may decay a little bit uh, faster than those who are unvaccinated. But again, those first five days would capture all of that period of time, which is why we didn't differentiate. Doctor, it's Cathy Kay here. Uh, some medical professionals in the UK are suggesting that we are getting to the beginning of the end of the coronavirus to a period where within a few months even, people who test positive for the coronavirus won't have to self-isolate at all. Do you... Are you having discussions along those lines of whether we might be getting to a stage where we live with COVID in the way that we live with a common cold? Um, certainly that, that would be aspirational and I hope to be in that place. Um, what I am you know, focused on now is making sure that we can get through this Omicron surge, that we do so with minimal amount of hospitalization and severe disease. Certainly the best way to do that would be to get people vaccinated and to have people get boosted if they're eligible for boosting. The best way to get this, this virus to be an endemic virus is to bolster all of the possible immunity that we can around the country. Um, and the best way to do that without having severe disease is to get people vaccinated and boosted. I, I guess the question is, is there something about Omicron specifically that might make people optimistic that COVID is mutating itself into a position where it is not much more serious than the common cold? Well, certainly we have seen, started to see data from other countries that um, for every 100 people, you have less severe disease with Omicron than you might with other variants. That said, we may have many, many more uh, cases. And so we may still very well see a lot of severe disease in the hospital. So, you know, um, I you know, want to project optimism and I want to be cautious in doing so. Dr. Walensky, Mike Barnacles here with a question for you, Mike. Dr. Walensky, as you know, because you live through it each and every day, this country, parts of this country, is frozen in fear of the very word, the virus, Omicron, whatever, frozen in fear. But no group of people in this country, I would submit, are more fearful of the virus than parents of school-age children who fear that the schools will be shut down. So in some cases, some cities have said, well, if a child comes up positive for the virus, that child will be removed and the rest of the class will be tested, but we won't shut down the schools. So my question to you is, given the mess that is testing in this country, who is going to test the children in these schools? Really important question, and I'm really happy to say that over this fall semester, we have successfully and safely been able to have 99% of our schools open. We just released uh, this past month um, two scientific reports on a strategy called test to stay in school, and that is once children are exposed, if you can test them, when you test them every other day, um, twice a week, you can keep those children in school safely. And in fact, doing that strategy, the test to stay strategy, resulted in many more days of children in school, hundreds of thousands of days of more children in school, and yet no more disease in the school or in the home. So a really productive, effective, promising strategy to keep our children in school. And we have resources and been working closely with states um, and with jurisdictions to make sure that those tests are available for any jurisdiction that wants it. Speaking of children, Dr. Walensky, the conventional wisdom over the last two years or so has been that children tolerate COVID relatively well. And yet recently, in the last few weeks, we've seen an explosion of kids in, in the hospital. What's going on there, as best you can tell? 
Yeah, really important question. So we are seeing higher numbers of children in the hospital. Of course, this is a common time of year for children to be admitted in the hospital. And some of the things we're seeing in the trends is they're not heading to the ICU more often that we can tell. Um, many of them are actually coming in for another reason, um, but they happen to be tested when they come in and they're found incidentally to have COVID. And third and really importantly, most of those children are not yet vaccinated. So the message here is get your children vaccinated. Vaccinated. Yeah, vaccination rates very low among children in this country. Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, we appreciate you stopping to take some time with us. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Coming up next Absolutely. year, Democratic for candidate for governor of Georgia, Stacey Abrams, joins us. Morning Joe's coming right back. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.